Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about giant ionic structure. Okay, so from the name, pretty simple to get. It implies that we're going to be talking about ionic compounds as well. Okay, so ionic compounds, they have giant ionic structure. In this video, we're going to talk about the four different properties of ionic compounds as well. So physical state, melting and boiling points, conductivity, um, basically electrical conductivity, and solubility. Before we get into the first property of ionic compounds, let's recall some examples that you've come across about ionic compounds. One very common example, sodium chloride. Another example could be magnesium oxide and another calcium bromide. Now, if you recall ionic compounds, they have ions, of course, which in other words, they have charges. Sodium ion would have a positive charge. Chloride ion would have a negative charge. Magnesium ion, positive charge. Oxide ion, negative charge. Over here, calcium ion, positive charge. Bromide ion, negative charge. Okay, so basically there are ions, there are charges. Ionic compounds, they're hard in general because they have strong ionic bonds. The ionic bonds in ionic compounds, they are strong. Okay? Another interesting property for ionic compound is that they're brittle in nature. Now, brittle is something that is easily deformed, easily breakable, something like glass. And if you look at the structure on the right over here, I've drawn charges, plus minus, plus minus, or you can actually do it the other way, negative plus, negative plus, okay? So, but they need to be in alternating. They need to be alternating charges from the top, from the top over here should be plus, bottom should be negative, the top plus over here, the right one should be negative. So basically they're alternating charges. And if you recall, this is called the lattice structure. Okay. Now, just imagine I'm going to apply some force, some pressure. Let's say I'm going to smash this with a hammer. Okay, I'm going to smash these two columns with a hammer. Okay. Now, logically speaking, what would happen? The two columns would move downwards, I guess, which would look something like this. So the lattice structure would look something like this. And over here, because I didn't apply any force, I didn't apply any pressure, so it would look something like this, okay? Now, if you notice something very interesting is that the middle part over here, the charges are the same. Now, the problem with this is when the charges are the same, repulsion would occur the charges will repel against one another. They would want to move away from one another. So when they repel against one another, this would split or break the lattice structure. Okay, when the lattice structure is broken, that is when we would say, for example, when you break the glass, you would say, oh, it's broken. Okay, that's what it basically means. So ionic compounds, even though they are hard because of the strong ionic bond, but they are also brittle, okay? Now, the second property we're going to talk about is melting and boiling point. Now, what I've told you earlier, ionic bonds, they are strong in nature. Now, because they're strong in nature, a huge amount of energy, a very large amount of energy is needed to break the ionic bonds which are present. Okay, let me go ahead and write that down. Large amount is need of energy is needed large amount of energy is needed to break the strong ionic bonds which are present okay now due to this 
the ionic compounds they have a high melting point and boiling point mp is the short form for melting point bp is a short form for boiling point okay so let me just recap it quickly Ionic compounds, they have a high melting and boiling point because a large amount of energy is needed to break the very strong, the strong ionic bonds which are present in the ionic compound. Okay, so in other words, ionic compounds, they have high melting and boiling points. Okay, now the third property we're going to talk about is conductivity, electrical conductivity. And compounds, they're able to conduct electricity due to two main reasons. The first one being due to presence of mobile ions. And the other one being due to delocalized electrons. Delocalized electrons mainly is dealt with metals and in this video, since we're talking about giant ionic structure, we're talking about ionic compounds. So fairly logical, we'll be only talking about mobile ions. Okay, ionic compounds, they do not have the localized electrons. Okay. So ionic compounds, they have mobile ions in two physical states. Okay, the first one in when they're in aqueous state, Okay, and the second one being when they're in molten state. So for example, let me give you an example, sodium chloride in aqueous state. So this is able to conduct electricity due to the presence of ions that are able to move freely. So ions that are mobile. How about, how about in solid state? Let me ask you a question. How about in solid state? Are ions mobile? in solid state the answer is no so there are no mobile ions present in solid state so in other words we would say the ionic compound is an insulator whereas in this case when they're mobile ions we would say they are conductors okay so any examples for insulator for an ionic compound? Yes, we have, for example, just go to your kitchen and grab some table salt, which is in solid state. You would know that they're actually not conducting electricity. They're insulators. Okay. So finally, the last property we're going to talk about is solubility. Ionic compounds, they are soluble in aqueous solution. So aqueous solution meaning soluble in water. Okay, now let's, let me show you a diagram which will help us understand a bit better. So let's look at the diagram over here. So in the middle over here, we have sodium and chloride com uh, ions over here. I want you to focus on I want you to focus on the diagram over here on the left. On the left over here, if you notice that the hydrogen has a partial positive charge, partial positive charge, this is delta positive. Okay, now this is due to a principle called electronegativity. I know some of you have not learned this yet, but if you recall in class, I have mentioned something about chemistry being fun. F O N, and this is where the O comes in. The O would basically hog or take most of, of the electrons towards itself. So the electrons would tend to go towards oxygen over here. Hence, you would see a partial negative charge for it. Now, because most of the electrons would be taken by oxygen over here. That's where the oxygen, uh, the electrons would tend to move. It would be attracted to the positive charge of sodium. Okay. Well, if you look on the right-hand side over here, 
because chloride is a negative charge, it would be attracted to the partial positive charge of hydrogen. So you would see the arrangement over here. The chloride ion is attracted to the positive of H, whereas on the left over here, sodium ion is, is a positive charge, it will be attracted to the negative charge of oxygen. So in other words, just simply speaking, sodium chloride, this ionic compound is able to be soluble in water is because of the charges being attracted to one another. Okay, so let me go ahead and write that down. Charges attract and they're able to dissolve in water. Is it clear? Okay, let me go back. So just to recap again, Ionic compounds, they have a giant ionic structure. We talked about the four different properties of ionic compounds. So the first property, physical state, melting and boiling point, conductivity, electrical conductivity, of course, and solubility. Okay, and recall something very important is that ionic compounds in giant ionic structure, they have I'm going to write on the left over here, they have strong, what is it? Strong ionic bonds. Yes, they have strong ionic bonds.